Hello, and welcome to part 5 of Let's Play Pokemon Fire Red. And now there shouldn't be so much damn editing. <laughs> Alright, so now we're going to fight Gary. You know, it always bothered me how Gary uh, doesn't have his own rival music. Uh, in, like, every other Pokemon RPG, the rival has their own battle theme, but uh, Gary doesn't. And it's weird because Gary's probably one of my favorite of the rivals, but he really doesn't have too much to, uh... Well, okay, he definitely does have a lot to differentiate himself from the other rivals. He had the most presence in the show, and he's probably the best... One of the better douchebags in the Pokemon universe. But, uh... I don't know, I always thought Ronald from Trading Card Game was way cooler. Because, uh... I, I briefly mentioned this in one of the other parts, but... Like, Gary is a jerk, and, like, Gary, Gary's a jerk, but he's not cool, is the thing. Like, he's very immature in his jerkness. Like, he, he's a very immature jerk. He says stuff like, smell you later, you know, really childish things. But Ronald, from the trading card game, he's, he's more of a badass. And it is funny because he's a badass that plays nerdy Pokemon card games, but he's still a badass. And his theme song makes him so cool. Like, it's that theme song is really awesome, and it gives this vibe of him being a douchebag, but him also being incredibly cool. <laughs> he's the kind of asshole that would have, like, a posse of lackeys if you were in, like, an 80s show or something, or an 80s movie. <laughs> you know, one of those kind of bullies that is just so cool, but he's a jerk. Trading Card Game, man, Pokemon Trading Card Game had the best Pokemon soundtrack, like, ever. And I, I hold to that, because that soundtrack is freaking amazing. And, like, I really love the Pokemon Red theme, uh, soundtrack, but, uh, Trading Card Game just blows it out of the water. And are we still fighting you, Gary? Or, I mean, uh, Rival Blah? I forget about it. Butterfree used a confusion. So that sleep powder that Bulbasaur used, that is a sign of things to come for Butterfree. I, Butterfree was one of the last remaining plushies of the old school plushies I still had. I actually just recently got rid of it. Uh, Butterfree was... Yeah, Butterfree was one of the first ones of the plushies I got. And I held on to it for a really long time, but it, like I said, it was just a, about a week ago I finally got rid of it. Uh, but oh well, Butterfree has always been one of my favorite Pokemon. I guess just because it was in the show early on and, you know, nostalgia makes me like it. But. And I guess also just because the episode where they got rid of Butterfree, like, they, that was the only time they ever did it well, where they got rid of a Pokemon and made it sad and actually made it look like Ash was genuinely sad that he got rid of it. Because in all of the other cases where he lets a Pokemon go, it's like, okay, bye-bye, I don't care anymore, but with Butterfree, you felt, you felt like he felt really sad about it, because he was crying, and, like, Brock's like, Brock's like, hey, Butterfree is almost out of sight, and he's like, goodbye, Butterfree, I'll miss you! And then there's a pause, take care, good buddy. It's like, yes! This, the, the old episodes were so good. Man, why couldn't they keep that kind of quality? No, and it later on just became slapsticky, goofy shit with no, with no emotion in it. And that's that's what the original episodes had. They had emotion. I mean, the characters were still pretty much blank slates, but they at least had more realistic human-like emotions. And later on, they were just cardboard cutouts that did the same shtick in every episode. It was really frustrating to see that show just degrade. And it's weird because the early episodes were the worst in terms of Pokemon battles. Like, all of the gym leader battles sucked in the first story arc. They, those got a lot better later on. Well, you know, until you used Thunderbolt as armor or shit. But <laughs> those got a lot more exciting as time went on. So they got the battles better later on, but they messed up everything else. 
everything else that made the old episodes actually way superior, even if the battles did suck early on. Also, they actually had hand-drawn attacks. Not every, not all the attacks were freaking CGI. It's and it's really annoying with the current episodes where all the attacks are CGI because you look at the old episodes, they were able to do it just fine with traditional animation. But no, no, we gotta cut corners and make it CGI and make it look terrible. Like, Swift? Like, I remember seeing Swift early on in the show, and it actually looked so much better when it was just the, uh, screen of hand-drawn stars rather than the cloud of CGI shit stars. Ugh. Anyway, we, uh, used our rare candies and we're using Twin Needle now. Thank Jesus fuckity Christ. Beedrill finally has a worthwhile attack, so now we can train Butterfree instead. And, damn it, I used up all of my talking before Nugget Bridge. <laughs> Ugh. Oh, Nugget Bridge. How annoying are you? Eh, it's not that annoying, honestly. It's just that it's an annoying part in any LP because you have to leave all of them in. <laughs> Bugcatcher Kale sent out Caterpie. Caterpie! Actually, that's another thing from the show I want to bring up, is the Caterpie segment. Just another testament to how good the old episode episodes were, is the, in, I think it was like the third or fourth episode, third episode, where Ash catches a Pokemon, they have this whole segment of, it's just Caterpie and Pikachu sitting out on a tree stump at night, and there's no actual dialogue or subtitles, it's just Caterpie and Pikachu talking, and if you know... And if you watch it a few times, you really start to pick up the conversation that they're having. Like you can, you can see what they're talking about by uh, their emo by their actions and the the way they're moving. Like when Caterpie like stands up on his hind legs, that means like he's growing, he's evolving. Then he spins around and he flaps his arms. Like that's him being a that's him being able to fly with his wings and be butterfree. It's really well done. God damn it, why... Ugh, this old show is so good, and I still hold... I still argue that to that to this day, is the people who say that Pokemon is a shitty show. Go back, watch those original episodes again. Watch the first story arc again. Or at least watch, like, maybe the first 30 episodes or so. Those were awesome. And the first six... The first five episodes in particular... Those are genius. Those are, like, incredible. That is, it's no wonder people got hooked into the show, because it was so good at first. It was so good, and they just screwed it up later on. God damn it. How dare you ruin such an amazing show. <sighs> I'm second, now it's serious. Wow, this has just been the rant about how good things were in the past episode. And you know what's odd? Is that the show was incredible back in the day, but the actual Pokemon game, looking back at it, really doesn't hold up. Like, the original Pokemon Red is total garbage. <laughs> like, the, if you're gonna play first gen, you have to play the remakes, because the first games are just broken messes. They do not hold up at all, and I don't care what any nostalgia whore says. I grew up with those games. I grew up playing Red, I grew up watching the show, collected the plushies, collected the cards, collected the figures. I collected everything. I was a Pokemaniac through and through. Watched all the movies in theaters. Those original games do not hold up. They suck. They are terrible. They are just awful games. Gold and Silver, I still say, are great. I actually prefer the original Gold and Silvers over the remakes. I don't know why, just something about the remakes' visuals really turned me off. And I know that's a lame excuse to say why I don't like it, but honestly, I often don't have great excuses for why I don't like something. But it, is, it was something about the visual style that I just really didn't like about the remakes of Heart, Gold, Soul, Silver. It just felt unnatural. Like, I wasn't a fan of that art... I wasn't a fan of the 4th gen, uh, graphics anyway. So to see the 4th gen graphics, uh, pasted onto one of my favorite childhood games really wasn't that appealing to me. So, it... Th those games just... 
I know people say, oh, you gotta play the remakes for those, but I, I wholeheartedly disagree. I say you have to play either gold or silver, t the originals, to uh, fully enjoy second gen. I mean, I know there was a lot of uh, great extra bonus content at the end of the game, apparently. I didn't get to all the extra bonus content, like post-game stuff. Like, I, I mean, I, by that I mean I didn't get past Red in the remake. Like, post-post-game <laughs> stuff, because the post-game stuff is Kanto, and then the post-post-game stuff is all the new stuff, which I didn't get to all that. But, uh... Whatever. I did my best. I have no regrets. I'm number four, getting tired. Actually, no. I've been talking about everything else about Pokemon except what I'm watching. <laughs> Nidoran Mail. You know, fuck Nidorans, because they had the only bad episode in the Orange Islands. I, I don't care what anyone says. Like, the Orange Islands, yeah, they had Tracy, which, to be honest, I would rather have Tracy over Johto-style Brock. Honestly, I just fucking hated Brock near during Johto, so I actually liked Tracy because it was not Brock. <laughs> but, uh, Orange Islands was awesome. Nobody seems to realize that. Like, go back and watch the Orange Islands. Lots of awesome stuff happened in Orange Islands. Like, that was probably some of, some of my favorite episodes of the whole series. A lot of my favorite episodes of the whole series are in the Orange Islands. Like, the best Team Rocket episode was in Orange Islands, where you really got the fee- You really understood why the three of them stuck together. Like, even though they bickered and argued all the time, and they didn't seem to really enjoy what they were doing, you really felt how much they cared for each other in that episode. That's one of the best episodes of Pokemon, is the Team Rocket episode in, uh, in, uh, Orange Islands, where Meowth becomes a diet- I, like, Meowth becomes this revered deity, and, like, Jesse and James are gonna leave him behind, but they all feel- they all feel so, uh, uncertain about if they should leave each other. They feel- they start to feel really bad, and then they realize how much they care for each other, and they get back together. It's a really nice episode! It's my favorite Team Rocket episode. And then in Orange Islands, there was also Charizard starts obeying, which is awesome. Uh, and then- uh, right after that episode is when Pokemon 2000 takes place, which is my favorite Pokemon movie. And then, uh, what else happens there? Snorlax! Snorlax is fucking awesome in Orange Islands. I mean, Snorlax, those, the, the Snorlax episodes made me, ha those, those two episodes are what made me like Snorlax as one of my favorite Pokemon, because he is fucking invincible in Orange Islands. <laughs> Like, he is the most awesome thing. One of the most awesome things in the entire series is Snorlax. Because every appearance he's in, he's just incredible. Like, nothing can stop him. It really goes to show just, you don't fuck with Snorlax or else you will get destroyed. <laughs> uh. And what else? Oh, I didn't like how in Orange Islands they really... Like, I'm a, I'm a supporter of the Ash-Misty pairing, I don't know. I, I, I don't adamantly express it, though, you know, those people who are like, they draw fanfiction pictures and write fanfiction stories, no, blech. forget that. Just just keep it to yourself, goddammit. If you want the, if you like the pairing, just keep it to yourself, honestly, because nobody really wants to hear about it, but they, when they actually do it in the show, it seems a bit off, like, it, it makes you feel a bit uncomfortable when they're actually doing the pairing in the show. It's sort of better if it's just left to your imagination, I think. <laughs> Alright, we're, now we're done Nugget Bridge. Okay, TM45, that's a tract, and that will be into... That will be taken into play later on. Uh, much, much, much later on. And again, editing. <laughs> And this is why I wanted to train Butterfree as much as it could during uh, Nugget Bridge, so Butterfree could go before Abra and uh, use Sleep Powder. Because Compound Eyes raises Butterfree's accuracy by 30%, so the Powder attacks will always hit, so long as Butterfree's accuracy doesn't get dropped at all. So, uh, yeah, that, that's a great thing about Butterfree. You really need to take advantage of that, too. So it's a great idea to teach Butterfree Toxic. And actually, for this run, I'm not entirely sure, because last time I taught, uh, 
Butterfree Toxic, but now I'm debating if I should teach it to Beedrill or what, but the accuracy thing is what makes me think I should teach it to Butterfree. Alright, now, no, this is not a racist thing. It is just because it is a anagram of Abra's name, Arab. <laughs> And this is what Arab will be used for, teleporting, so I don't have to do so many sloppy edits. And just for convenience sake. So, uh, thanks for listening to the... and, uh, see you next time.